Hi guys, this is GSNOM.com and I'm here with a review of the Sony Xperia XZ1, the fourth flagship from Sony. It was unveiled at IFA 2017 and this is actually the first Android Oreo phone we test. It comes with a special 3D capture camera at the back. And this time Sony offers rounded edges, not something they do every day, and it's quite compact for a flagship. It's priced at $605 on Amazon, it's the successor to the Xperia XZ, and if you want, it's sort of a lighter version of the Xperia XZ Premium, because it doesn't come with a 4K screen, it comes with a Full HD screen. It's available in black, silver, blue, and... Uh, pink yes pink and now let's talk about the design so first of all the design reminds me of the nokia n9 and the first lumias because we have rounded edges and we have flat bottom and top and that for me means basically nokia n9 and the lumias now it's very comfy to use because it's quite compact at 5.2 inches i can easily reach any area of the screen i want so it's good uh, when it comes to one hand usage it's quite a pretty okay grip you wouldn't believe it that it's made of a piece of metal, uh, it's got a new body design but it feels more like plastic on account of the soft touch which is grippy and comfy. It's got a Sony DNA for sure, if you look at it it's still a rectangular device with simple lines. 7.4mm in thickness, much slimmer than the Xperia XZ 8.1mm and it weighs 155 grams which is less than the 161 grams of the Xperia XZ. It's got a pretty discreet and interesting antenna here. As you can see it's a bit T-shaped. Anyways, uh, it's got IP68 waterproofing and metal unibody approach with soft touch finish. Basically at first sight it's nothing new really till you get to touch it and feel the curvature and how comfy and well built it is. Time to talk about the screen. So. It's a 5.2 incher for sure, it's an IPS LCD with a Full HD resolution and the usual stuff like Triluminous, X-Reality, sRGB 138% and uh, also HDR. Yes, we have HDR support for the screen of the phone which is good news for Netflix and YouTube HDR buffs. Now the actual screen experience can only be put to the test with our special test videos and boy we have quite a few stuff quite a few contents on this device. So here we go, playing a test video right now. First thing I noticed, a very vivid set of colors. Also big bezels for modern standards. The screen is bright and crisp, excellent clarity, wide view angles and the contrast was rather good even in the strong sunlight. And the HDR actually helps with the video, uh, the colors and the contrast are aided by the functionality. Now let's see what else we have here, so go to the album again and see how the screen did in our test. This is the pixel setup under the microscope, it's RGB stripes and then we measure the brightness, achieving a very solid value of 553 lux units, which is actually superior to the iPhone 7, Galaxy S8 and Galaxy Note 8, so that's a performance. Still it scores below the predecessor the Xperia XZ and it's 611 lux units. Also below the Sony Xperia XA1 Ultra, which guess what? it had the exact same 611 lux units. Of course, there are tweaks to apply to the screen. Here we go, we got brightness level, adaptive brightness, there's the smart backlight control, there's color gamut and contrast, with the pro mode, standard mode and super vivid mode, there are white balance options, RGB slider, video image enhancement, which actually works, it gives it a more kick, more life, font size, display size, system icons, and rotation, jammed camera, camera and glove mode. Overall a very solid screen, ideal for some binge watching, although on a more compact diagonal. Now as far as the rest of the specs are concerned, we've got here a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835, which is a flagship CPU, there's 4GB of RAM, 64GB of storage, microSD card slot, and guess what, the phone is actually very very fast, no matter what you do, rebooting, reinstalling, resetting, installing apps, playing games, opening up multiple apps, things actually feel even snappier than they did on Android Nougat, that's thanks to Android Oreo. Now uh, since there's no lag, I have to highlight that again, games work out very fine. Our usual benchmark game is Riptide GP Renegade and here we go, we have it here, so let's do a quick race. Once again, very very snappy. Keyword, keyword of the day, snappy. Here we go. I can already tell from the frame rate that this is a powerhouse of a phone. Benchmarks will also confirm that. 
excellent graphics, highlights, shadows, textures and the speed sensation is great. That HDR also helps. Now uh, we're done with the gaming, let's go to the benchmarks and let's see how that went down. Now we go here, we got a bunch of screenshots, as usual we did Quadrant, Antutu, Nanomark and the whole bunch. Now in Quadrant you should know that we were almost identical to the Sony Xperia XZ Premium, we beat the Xiaomi Mi 6 and the Huawei Mate 9 Pro, but score below the HTC U11 and the HTC 10. Now uh, a good surprise, a pleasant surprise came in Antutu, uh, provided that I'll find it, here we go, quite solid result, it's actually placed on the 9th spot from all the hundreds of phones we've tested, it beats the LG G6 and the Google Pixel XL but cannot beat the Galaxy S8 and the iPhone 7. If you want to talk about graphics, I'm going to leave that to Slingshot Extreme with a solid score. This is actually the third placed phone, it beats the Sony Xperia XZ Premium and HTC U11 but scores below the Galaxy S8 and the Xiaomi Mi 6. And in general it was a top 4, top 5 material in Geekbench, so that's nice to see. You'll find all the benchmarks in our full review. Now, uh, if you want to talk about the temperature, luckily there is no overheating here, so that's not a problem. 34.3 degrees Celsius in Riptide GP Renegade, the game from before, and 34.4 degrees Celsius after running GFX Bench, so zero overheating, that's nice. Now on the battery front, you'd say that a 2700mAh battery wouldn't impress, but uh, you'd be wrong, on some other phones this capacity was enough to surprise us. Comes with Quick Charge 3.0, Stamina Mode, and by the way, it's actually a downgrade from the Xperia XZ, that one has a 2900mAh battery, this one, this one has a 2700 Now let's see how it did in our tests. First of all, we did the usual HD video playback in a loop. And hopefully I can find it here in the middle of all of these captures, options and so forth. So this test is done with HD video playback on a loop showing us how the device handles uh, long periods of playbacks like you know watching Netflix, watching movies, stored on the device, watching YouTube and you know all the other videos that people like to watch. Okay, so we achieved a time of, let's see here, 8 hours and 54 minutes of continuous HD video playback, which is not exactly impressive nowadays, we're used to seeing phones surpass 10 hours, I'm talking about the flagships, at least it beats the HTC U Ultra and Galaxy Note 4, but still scores below the Sony Xperia XZ by 7 minutes, it's beaten by the LG V10 and the Xperia L1, which is basically an entry level phone, so that's not very good. Now in the meantime, the PC Mark test also shows, uh, I would say, decent result, but not groundbreaking. 8 hours and 13 minutes, this is superior to the OnePlus 3 and the Galaxy S7, but it's below the Galaxy S7 Edge and the Huawei Nova. Charging is a bit on the long side, at 2 hours and 37 minutes, and it may be superior to the Xperia XZ by 5 minutes, and it's also below the Google Pixel XL. Now we did the charging in steps. And we needed 5 minutes to get to 5%, 15 minutes for 17% and 30 minutes for 31%. After 1 hour we were at 63%. Of course we have options for the battery and I'm talking about these things here. We got an estimation of the usage, how to use stamina, power saving exceptions. And of course the stamina modes. This will disable some functions to reduce battery consumptions and then there is ultra stamina mode which only lets you access these basic apps in the list here, phone, contacts, messages, camera, you know the works. And finally battery care which will set up the charge speed during the night time so the phone will not damage the battery by charging without purpose and other options here. So overall I would say a pretty modest battery compared to other factories this year. It's okay in the PC mark area but video playback should and could be longer on account of the fact that we have an HDR screen and we like to enjoy it for as much as possible. Now let's fire on the camera app, it goes something like this, we got the superior auto mode which is quite snappy and as usual for a Sony phone it takes quite a bit till the picture is taken as you can see it takes quite a long while actually much longer than on other phones uh, it's also a bit buggy sometimes the camera app so let's close it down open it again that's more like it and let's try again 
Okay, that's the spirit. We got a pretty fluid zoom, very fast focus, and we also have the manual mode, which is ton of options like white balance, exposure, ISO, shutter, and so forth. We got HDR resolution, object tracking, metering, and much more. So superior auto, manual, video, which includes uh, shooting 4K, full HD 60 frames per second, and of course, super slow mo. 960 frames per second there is automated reality panorama creative effect and that's about it plus a special app which is being included separately it's called the 3d creator and i will get into that later now you've already seen the camera then to see the results of the camera we have here gallery beautiful gallery filled with shots taken during the daytime and i have to say I was actually quite blown away by these images. Somehow I started with the selfies. I'm very happy with the skin texture, the skin color, and also the texture of the eyes, the hair, even the background looks nice. Uh, the colors are well calibrated. And uh, even though I recently praised the Xiaomi Mi 6 for having a great camera, this one actually is able to fight on par, if not beat it. So once again, a few selfies. I was actually impressed by the selfie camera so much. I felt the need to put it to the test in the strong sun with the sun at the back and in various other conditions by the way excellent colors captured by the main 19 megapixel camera and also excellent level of detail both when actually shooting and on the pc you zoom in uh, however much you want and you'll be happy with the level of detail you can see me zooming right now that's the actual distance of the church zoom in again and again and again and the details are very impressive now let's see more shots this is a difficult situation the front camera had to face the sun and in spite of that it handled things reasonably once again excellent color calibration clarity exposure and we also have a pretty good panorama here the resolution is quite generous 21536 over 3424 pixels there is no burn good colors there is no big curvature as you know panorama sometimes are exaggeratedly curved you're probably wondering how the phone handles the close-ups. I would have to say they're great in clarity, texture and the background blur highlights the object even more. Several more shots here. We also have more vividly, vividly colored objects like those ones. In spite of the fact we surpassed 100 or even 200 shots, we did not encounter any blurred situation, any failed photo and nothing like that. I would say that this phone is able to fight the Galaxy S8 and Galaxy Note 8 on par, also the HTC U11 and I'm sure it can give the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus a run for their money. More shots here. We played with the perspective, changed focus, took pictures in the shade with difficult dynamic ranges and never caught the phone off guard, not once. Excellent color, brightness, um, exposure, whatever you want, it's top notch. The, on a personal note, this has to be one of my favorite phones so far in 2017 on account of the accuracy of the colors and the level of details. Now, that during the day, during the night time, let's see how things went. So low light shots are here and let me start off with these ones. Here we go. So we try to capture the moon. Usually you'll just see a spot in the middle of the clouds, but thanks to these details, the moon actually was almost seen. Street light halos are, I would say, reasonable. Not the biggest in the world, also not the smallest. We have a pretty bright flash that makes things a bit reddish at the top, but nothing major. It's superior to the Xperia XZ from last year, which produced some, let's say, interesting albeit not very originally calibrated hues great level of detail but considering the aperture we get here it's nowhere near as bright as the HTC's and Galaxy S's and Note's of the last year things also get a bit yellow at times I would say the street light halos have a decent size and at least we did not encounter grain that's a plus in low light conditions so great details very crisp crisp and good colors it's solid all around it beats the huawei p10 p10 plus and even the lg g6 but scores below the galaxy note 8 and galaxy s8 by a bit though those are much brighter i have to say and by the way excellent shot of a church during the night time with some solid level of zoom okay now it's time to discuss the video capture and see how that panned out so let me start off with the videos taken during the day. 
somehow we got started with a front camera video and vloggers beware, it's excellent. Stabilization is great. Loving the microphone, loving the colors and the brightness, it was a very strong sun. This day I know that the sky is a bit burnt and the blue is almost turquoise, but the clarity, stabilization and lighting is excellent. So video blogger would be probably happy with the results here. Now this is the front camera, the 30 megapixel one. Let's see how the back camera handled the pressure. First of all, we got this video here. It's typical full HD MP4, 30 frames per second, 70 mega per second. And although we have the sun in front of us, the setup of the exposure and the dynamic range are fantastic. And of course, excellent level of details when zooming in, the perk of having a camera that's superior to a 12 megapixel one. The usual stabilization test and as usual Sony kicks everybody's behind with their steady shot 5 axis technology. They beat the Galaxy Note 8, the HTC's and probably also the latest iPhones. Haven't seen them in action yet but I have a good feeling about this. So I am descending a set of stairs by going down two at a time and still zero flickering and zero problems with motion. So excellent stabilization as usual. Very happy with the color calibration and the details. Also the lighting, of course we did a 4K video, which is this one here, very crisp, well lit. Check out this very nice exposure change, I was coming from an area with a lot of sun towards one with shade and it adapted perfectly. Lovely details and colors, the colors of the fall. So as usual for Sony's actually, even the mid-range ones, this shoots very nice video and particularly the dynamic range and also the details plus the colors, no burn, no problem in both the shade and the sun. Of course the super slow motion thing, it's still gimmicky if you ask me, uh, not hugely impressive and uh, uh, let's see if we actually save that. So yes, we did some slow motion action and yes, it's basically the same as we left it on the Xperia XZ Premium, but I still find it a gimmick because for one, it requires a lot of sun. If you don't have a lot of light, it will not come out properly. And then what's actually the use aside from a cool skateboard trick or a cat jumping around, I don't see any reason for it. Anyways, that's another video. In general, I was happy with the quality here. I'm also happy with the quality of the other Sony Xperia phones we tested recently when it comes to video capture and I actually feel that it's superior to the Sony Xperia XZ from last year and can fight the Galaxy Note 8 on par or even beat it a bit thanks to the great stabilization. It certainly surpasses the LG G6 and the Huawei P10 and in my book it's very close to my Handycam, yes I just said that. Because it cannot be all perfect, there are some... Uh, well, let's say not so good captures during the night time. Let's find those. So during the night things get a bit more bubbly. That's probably my best description. So here we go. The lighting is certainly not on par with the other flagships. There's a bit of motion blur here and there. There's a lot of reflections happening. The microphone is okay, object tracking is so-so, the colors are decent and things are much darker than a, on a F1.7 flagship. Clarity is okay, but there's some floppiness going on, some curved areas that will tremble like uh, the moment you filming a flame, for example. This is below the Galaxy S8 and the Galaxy Note 8 and the HTC 11, but at least we have the daytime capture video one, which was excellent. Now that we're done with the camera, I have to highlight something. This is actually, this one here, my favorite camera, my personal favorite camera for the year 2017 because it's the most honest one in colors, exposure, dynamic range, and it takes some badass videos and photos. Now, we also have 3D Creator, and I have to say, people have been praising it, but it takes a lot of tutorials and patience to get something going. So, you can scan people's faces, you can scan food, you can scan your pets, and then you can 3D print them. So if you want to 3D print a relative or your cat, put it on the cake, you can do that, you can print your model on your own 3D printer or you can edit 3D graphics in Maya or whatever software. The, these are some template scans, I tried a practice scan on a person, a girl I know and as you can see it's horribly uh, deformed, not the girl but the scan. So if I actually printed this and showed it to her she would be scared so 
the um, setup is a bit uh, hard and also the actual process of scanning can be annoying and has to be repeated a lot it feels like a beta endeavor now if we go to the browser we got chrome here and let's load up gsndon.com here we go we're using swift key by the way for the input it's loading not very fast although it has some very great benchmarks talking about velamo and sun spider and the keyboard is quite comfy we got swipe and we got uh, some uh, options here for swift key available anyways comfy input and reasonably fast browser now other things we're mentioning on the connectivity front we got usb type c port here 4 glt category 16 gps and glonass and on paper gigabit class speeds of course wi-fi miracast bluetooth 5.0 there's the dlna google cast and usb type c now the cores were loud and clear we have excellent microphones here and we also did a speed test so let's see how that panned out so speed test is this one here and these are the results they're actually amazing in wi-fi up to 270 mega per second downloads and um, uh, 27 mega per second uploads in 4g 129 over 46 it's an excellent result and finally here we are with the os ui and applications this is our first contact with android 8.0 oreo and I tried to gather all the novelty about it. It's actually not a huge upgrade from Nuga, only some small changes. One of them involves the design and the looks of the music player, which you can see in the drop down area. Now, we have new virtual buttons. You can tell the designs are a bit different and the animations are a bit different. But by the way, all the things you're seeing here, some of the stuff I'm mentioning is actually not available because this is a skinned version of audio with the Xperia UI on top. So new buttons very small visual changes and the settings menu has been made a bit more confusing now it's much shorter than before as you can see here well not much shorter just a bit shorter and things are more nested now compared to the way they were before some categories have been grouped together others have been removed and placed in different areas so now aside from those nesting options that I mentioned here and by the way you should see them better on a stock Oreo phone we have lighter hues in the interface a lighter gray and if you go to the quick settings area you'll see that you can actually snooze notifications so I can snooze this for one hour I can undo it and there are a variety of options here we have these settings general notifications we get categories you can also allow notification dots so notification dots are something like this you can see extra options by keeping pressed on an app like the 3d touch on ios for example so the dots will appear as actual dots above the app and show that something's up now uh, we also have a new approach for the drop down area as you can see the music player is changed the notification way is changed and you can see those that didn't fit a small icons here these are the quick settings also revamped now we have the shortcuts here not very comfy i have to say and uh, there's also a special extra screen that opens now when you press on an app like bluetooth and you can see the pair devices and extra settings so an extra window has been added to this area other than that we have adaptive icons new aspect ratio support white color gamut snooze notification notification channels and loads of settings for the notifications so if you go here you can configure them allow the dots notification light show them on the lock screen mess with permissions we got a picture in picture mode which somehow is not supporting on this device you can limit background resource usage or better set android audio takes care of that there's google play protect to protect you from malware and dubious software and uh, as i said before the notification dots are actually something like uh, um, unread badges so if you're familiar with unread badges that's what you're getting here now um, another thing here is the smart select text so let's pretend we're uh okay so let's pretend we're inside an article and i want to select some text and now thanks to the smart select it knows what to do before i do it it can predict what app you need if you want to share it on whatsapp and that often it can predict that if you want to do a web search you can also predict that so it already knows before you're doing it 
Android Oreo learns from your habits, it's got an ambient display feature, it's got a faster boot, it's got the autofill API, it completes forms for you, faster updates and support for Bluetooth 5.0, LDAC and a smarter Google Assistant Plus, downloadable fonts and Android instant apps. From what I understood, you can actually access those apps right from the Google search, as strange as that may sound. Something like this. Anyways, let's see the other options and novelty. We got pointer capture, we got Wi-Fi assistant that lets us connect to the highest quality Wi-Fi. We got a new music control and overall, as I said before, it feels like a more minor update coming from Android Nougat, only the finer things have been tuned. Now, if you want to look at the settings, they're basically the same as usual. Let's play with the, oh, here's the Google Play Protect, which scans app. So let's play with the security options. We have a fingerprint scanner here into the power button. Let's set it up, use a pin, okay, and here we go. It has about between 15 and, let's go again. It has between 15 and 19 steps. It's very hard to set up because you will probably press it by mistake a bunch of times, but it's quite accurate and quite fast. You actually have to press it. Other similar sensors just have to be gently touched. Not this one actually has to be pressed. So I would say quite fast and quite accurate. Other than that, the experience is rather familiar. This is the multitasking. We got the split screen option thing going on available for a few apps chrome is among them i'm sure as you can see split screen still works okay other than that well you can keep the screen pressed you got your widgets wallpapers and themes typical sony transparency affair and that's about it now as far as the apps go there's quite a few of them 41 we got ps4 remote play we got avg protection spotify sketch movie creator and a bunch more now, in the end, to take full advantage of Android Oreo, I would probably have to show you something like a stock OS phone. Well, we should come about the Pixel 2 over the next days. So that's about it. This has been the review of the Sony Xperia XZ1, complete with an analysis, a fast, quick look at Android 8.0 Oreo. Now it's time for the pros and cons. On the pro side, we got a very compact phone for a flagship. It's got a solid build. It's got a quality display, it's got Android Oreo on board, not many phones can brag about that. Top performance, good acoustics, great selfies, great camera all around. And uh, 3D Creator is of course a plus, uh, it's a good idea. And we have the best stabilization on the market. Those are the pros. On the cons, well, basically the same design template for a while now. The battery is not very impressive, especially in the video playback area. The decibel meter level should be a tad higher if you ask me. The low light videos are underwhelming compared to the rest of the capture and the super slow motion is still a gimmick. 3D creator feels more like a beta and uh, uh, it needs a lot of light, just like the super slow motion. However, in the end I have to say, the Xperia XZ1 is my favorite phone camera wise so far this year. It's great for vloggers next to this camera has the best stabilization test to this camera. It takes excellent videos, handy cam level, using the main camera at the back. Also takes some very nice pictures in both daylight and the nighttime. Its only vulnerability is low light video capture. Basically, this flagship has only, let's say, flaws, although they're not exactly flaws. It keeps the same design format as always. The battery should be better and the video capture at night could be a tad better. Aside from that, it's the perfect phone with Android Oreo right now among those we've tested so far. And Oreo feels like a small upgrade like those from Jelly Bean 1 to Jelly Bean 2, let's say. So that's about it from gsnl.com. This has been the review of the Sony Xperia XZ1, my favorite camera so far in 2017. Bye bye.